Michael Keepers and business owners. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a tenant for a rental property and how you could automatically set up billing in QuickBooks Online so the tenant can never say they forgot. All right. I mean, most tenants should know, right? So I went to sales and then here we are, already had one tenant set up. Let's say this person has a real name. I'll just use my email. I wonder if it'll say there's a problem. Okay, so we entered their name email. Here's a good place to put in the terms of a lease. So this is how I would do it. So let's say it's starting 1-1-2021 to 2021 I often have used this section to keep track, especially like on a more of like a commercial property. It's usually five to 10 years. And I would put in here the different um, rates, right? So let's say it's 2,500 and then one, one, 22, let's say it went up $50, no, 150, excuse me. Okay, I'm only gonna do two, but you would just keep going like that. So I've done that. And then I actually built out the recurring transactions in QuickBooks. So, I mean, you really still need to keep a log and you know a spreadsheet of when your leases are ending. I think you keep that that um, list. Whether I don't care what wonderful software you're using, you need a hard copy. Okay, so we set that up. So the first invoice would be January 2021. So you have to create one to get it going. So what did I say? 2,500. The other thing to know though. Let's say she's in apartment two. I would not set up these products to have a memorized rate because it could change every year. And you don't want um, a new bookkeeper, let's say you set this up and then you get too busy and you want someone else to help you, they will not remember. Better make it where it defaults to zero and someone has to use a brain and go look up the amount, okay? And apartment number two, I think we were in a prior video, that's let's say building one. The class is used, in this case, this video is really for landlords, it's helping track if you had two different buildings with different units. Okay, so then you go down to the bottom, make recurring, you're gonna automatically email it. I say send it two days, three days in advance. The start date would be January 1st and it would end after 12 occurrences. I put up my fingers at two, but it's 12. And rent due on receipt should be due on the first. So I have someone, another client um, that uses QuickBooks Online for billing. I think there's some, you know, Rentigo or Rentigo is one um, quite a few places use, but you could use this. Um, the tenant could pay by bank transfer. The only issue is I've seen is that it takes like five to seven days after the tenant processes for you to actually get that because the discount is so low. So I would not recommend using QuickBooks Online for receiving payments unless you have wonderful cash balances. Because if you're looking to get your mortgage in by the 10th, this would be a really, choosing bank transfer would be a, not a good choice. Credit cards, you're gonna lose, you know, two and a half to 3%. I also, QuickBooks does not allow you to add on as some rent collection software, uh, you know, portals do. So, but it is an option. Okay, so you're gonna set it up to automatically send three days 
So it'll still have the build date of 1-1, but it'll go out three days early. So then you would save the template. Okay, so it's not gonna show any transactions because it's not January, 2021 yet. But then let's say we wanna do the second year. So we get them all set up. So again, we would go to 1-1-20-22. Let me just show you something else that I'm seeing happen so that you would wanna know. So you wanna go back into here and in the settings, payment and billing, we wanna change the terms to do on receipt. That's another thing you wanna um, fix or remember to add, which I didn't when I set her up. Another thing, it would be good is I think we made her like number one, apartment number one or apartment number two. We should put that. So we'll just say you so we can look at it. Okay, so she's apartment number two. So here. So in the notes, I'm gonna show you one other thing I would do that I've done. It, it looks a little funny, but I, I don't really care if the tenant doesn't think we're amazing um, bookkeepers. Another thing you could do is do here, apartment number two. That way it's easier for you to look at Sue Smith. Okay, and why you would want that and you could make this one. Okay. Now at least you can start like looking down. Um, Right, there's Bob Jones. And let's just change it and say, Sue's, we're really changing it to December 1st. That way we can. So this way you can see. You can see who owes you money easily and they're in a better order. So apartment one, apartment two. One other idea that I do with some, because when I first started out in um, real estate bookkeeping, I didn't really have much knowledge of my client's um, lease terms. And sometimes that's just, you know, a client getting to know me as a bookkeeper or, you know, they, but the problem was they wouldn't tell me certain things. And then we would find out I would find out that my client forgot there was an increase. So another thing you can put up in the company or the display name is the lease end date. So let's say, it's expiring. Can I make this bigger? So when you're like not sure, this one we say 1231.22, you'll be able to easily see it. And honestly, with tenants like this, you really shouldn't even have to invoice them. I totally don't believe you should have to receive uh, or send invoices for tenants, either um, residential or commercial. But this way, at least, these would be auto-generating and you could easily see the expiration date. Also though, please keep a good spreadsheet of um, lease expirations. So that's how you, let me, actually I'm ending, but I'm not done. So now the other thing is 
let's say it was wrong. I go to my notes and say instead it was 12 1 2020 to 11 30 2021. So then that would be 12 1. This also helps you if you find out someone didn't do it right, how to fix it. Okay, so we keep our notes there, right? We say this, she's in apartment number two, but luckily we have it also in her display name. But if you have some problem, you don't want that to show in there, you know, keep it here. But if you're trying, if you're working with a bookkeeper, you really want to make it as simple as possible for that bookkeeper not to screw up. So I totally believe in codes that are really easy to read and tenants that are easy for a bookkeeper to find. I don't know how many clients I have that their tenant has like three different names because maybe their company and they do business as something else or they had one company name and my client refers to it as something and it's, you know, I understand who it is, but you know, it's really hard when you have like two names. So let's see, we wanted to do 11-30-2021. So here we have this one. Let me see. Next date. Edit. Okay, so our start, so we're only going to do 11 occurrences because we already did one ourselves. So you just save it like that. And then anytime I get a lease from a client and, and they're using QuickBooks, I build out all the recurring transactions for, I don't care if it's five or 10 years. It's better to stop right now, get all your years of lease in there so that it's just auto generating, okay? So we said she was gonna go to 2650 the following term. So what you would do again is make her an invoice. Go to Sue. And you're not gonna, it's not gonna post. So 12 1 2021. And I would put in the description, this was apartment two. So now you're gonna new, you could put the lease description here 12 1 2021 to 11 30 2022. We said it was gonna change to 2650. And I think it's building one for the class. Okay. So this way, when she gets the email, she's going to remember, oh, right, my lease term has gone into the next set and I, my rent just went up $150, right? So we're going to go down to the bottom, click make recurring. Our first start date would be 12-21-2021 with 12 occurrences automatically send three days ahead. Okay. And so you're gonna save this template. You just keep going. And now you can see I've got this one starting January, 2022. Well, that's not right. It's supposed to start, let me see. Isn't it supposed to start 12-1? I screwed that up. Sorry, guys. Okay, so now we've got the start date 12 1 2021. That's why you check it. Okay, so you just keep going. You keep putting in, let's say it's a five year lease. I mean, usually residential don't do more than a year or two, but whatever. Maybe, you know, this is just an example. So you would just continue doing this, and this would help automate it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't check it. Um, and that's how you would set up a client and that's how you would set up um, auto invoicing. I really wouldn't recommend QuickBooks so much for receiving payments unless you're gonna do um, the bank transfer. 
but it does take five to seven business days. So if you have any cash issues, um, it's not the processor I would pick. All right. If you have anything you would like me to teach on this channel, please let me know. Please like and subscribe. And if you're looking for uh, private QuickBooks Online lessons, I can be reached at Lori at HV, book, HV Bookkeeping. And our phone number is 914-505-6149. Thanks.